Luminar Neo Complete Tutorial for Beginners is starting right now. Those who are familiar with Luminar Neo know that this is an AI-powered photo editing software from Skylum, which has a faster editing process than Lightroom or Photoshop. It's also absolutely perfect for photographers who are just starting out and they are learning how to edit photos. I'll show you why shortly. I'm going to be completely honest, I'm the old school Photoshop Lightroom more than 15 years. Lately though, I'm open to new AI technology and learning how it can speed up our workflow. Whatever took before hours and tedious works now can be done literally with one click. So if you are someone who is looking for something quick, you might find this video interesting. Link to the software can be found below the video in the video description as well as coupon code. I have partnered up with Skylum, which is also a sponsor of today's video, to bring you this tutorial. For the new faces, my name is Zdenka Karela. If photography and video is your passion, consider subscribing. Let's open up Luminar Neo and import the images. You can add photos separately or you can add the entire folder. I'm gonna go ahead and add images separately. When you import the images, it will take you directly to presets. Let's click on the catalog to see all the images. When you click on the photo, you can see all the information on the right, such as ISO, shutter speed, and aperture settings. If you double click the photo, you will see it across the screen. You can also zoom in, drag the image around, double click to return to see all the images. The most important feature for photographers who are just learning how to edit photos are presets. Not because it edits it automatically for you, but because you can see how it was edited and what has changed and you can adjust those little parts further. You will learn faster. Let's select this photo and go to presets. At the top, this program will tell you what presets are suggested for this particular photo. You can use those, but you can also experiment and try any of these below. I'm going to go to Waterscapes collection. Let's select dark and rich. If I hit the eye here, I see before and after. What a big difference. If you don't like the preset, you can always hit the undo button and try another one. If you want to start all over, you can go to actions and hit revert to the original. I really like the dark and rich, so I'll select that. Let's see what was done to the image. So now you can look at every single thing that has changed. There is an eye if you press it, you can see before and after, you can drag it slightly to see what it does. And if you even want to edit this further, change something, you certainly have many options here. It is best to take your time and drag each slider and study in the photo what it is doing, what is changing here. Once you are done with all the edits, you can save it as a preset in case you want to apply it to all the other photos from the same set. Let's try another photo, this portrait. Let's go to presets. I am going to try this experimental collection. There are some really nice effects here. I'm going to choose the burned film Let's go to edit again to see what changes are happening here and edit further. If you look at the left side, you will see the layer section. Here is your burned look and then the actual photo with all those edits. Let's say I don't like this burned layer. I can right click. Here are three choices. Hide the layer, remove layer or duplicate layer. I'm going to remove the layer. Now, when I hit plus at the top, now I have access to all those other wonderful layers. You can choose one or more. Each layer can be controlled separately. On the right are layer properties. You can change opacity, how much you want the layer to be seen through. You can flip it horizontally or vertically. You can stretch the layer, rotate it, fit it back. If you go to the masking panel, you can use this option here or try AI mask. You will see this cool animation as the program is working. Let's say I'm very happy with the edits, but I would like to change the composition. I'm going to select the base layer, the actual photo. Let's close the layer properties and go to crop section. 
Here you can choose the aspect ratio you need. You can drag it, turn it, choose any view you would like to see. You can rotate the crop and you can always go back to the original. You can fix your horizon alignment or you can let the program suggest composition with composition AI. Let's go back to catalog, choose a different photo and let me go through tools and explain what they can do. So first, let's just choose the image. Let's go to edit. On the right side, you will see tools. And I'm going to start with favorites, enhanced AI and sky. So let's go to enhance. Here you can drag accent to make slight adjustment in the image. And you can already see how the image is just getting more of a contrast. It's just popping up better. Or I can just select a sky enhancer, which will only work with the sky. Another very cool feature is that you can go to masking and select AI mask. What it does now, you will see this very cool animation. It will process the whole photo. It will find areas and separate them. So you can start editing those areas separately. So now you can see that it selected several different areas of the image. If you want to work only with the sky, you will press the sky. If you want to work with water, you will press the water and so on. And then you can just slide this adjustment, work on those areas separately. Another automatic feature is sky. When you press the sky selection, you can choose whichever you prefer for the image. And I think that um, this one could be quite nice with this photo. So I'm going to select the sunset clouds and I will wait for the program to replace the sky. Now that I have the sky selected, I can modify everything further. So I can change the sky orientation. I can change the vertical position. I can change horizontal position. I can flip it if I like. I can choose mask refinement. What it does, it will fix up a little bit the horizon. As you can see, it's blending in more. I can close gaps. I can fix details. I can go to scene relighting and change the light. So it's more blending in. The more you drag, you can see the strength. I can change the relight saturation. Or if there is a person standing in a shot, I would select Relight Human. Reflection is quite important if you will be adding, for example, sunset and you have waterscape. That way it will look more realistic. If there is no reflection in a water, it's not going to look real. So all these will help you to select the right amount of reflection. And lastly, you have all other sky adjustments, such as the focus, grain, atmospheric, haze, warmth. You can make the sunset a little bit cooler. Oh, and you can make it, on the other hand, even warmer. You can bring the brightness down or you can bring it up. So this is the image before and after. Completely different shot. So this was first section of favorites. Let's go to another section in the tools, which is essential. And I'm going to select a different image for the first one, which is develop. So I'll go back to catalog. And for example, I'm going to select this one. Develop has all the basic adjustment for the image, such as light. You can bring the exposure down. You can use smart contrast. You can bring the highlights down. You can bring even the shadows down. Further below, you can control black and whites, curves, where you can control exposure. You can control separate colors, such as red, green, and blue. Next is color. Here you can control temperature, tint, saturation, and vibrance. Another one is sharpness, noise reduction, optics, and transform. If you want to control certain area, you certainly can go to masking where you can mask with brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, or you can use their mask AI. And again, you can see that the mask AI already selected flora, 
water. So if I wanted to work only with the water, I would select the water, go to back to adjustments and just play with the adjustments of the water. Another tool is erase. You can do things like remove power lines automatically here. But first you can erase certain areas manually. So you can just select the size of the brush and then slide across of the screen to select what you want to erase. Or you can hit remove power lines. And here you can see the power lines are gone with literally one click. If you would have a dust spots in the image, you can do the same here if you click remove dust spots. So this is before and after, before, after. Another tool under erase is structure AI. And here you can also do masking again, or you can adjust the whole image by sliding the amount to the right to bring a little bit more structure or the opposite way. When you select more structure, you can also boost it up. Let's move on to another tool, which is color very self-explanatory here. You will be controlling color of the image. Black and white is next. And again, notice that there is masking available as well in each of these sections. So you can control certain areas of the image separately. Next tool is details. And here again, masking is available or you can adjust the whole image by bringing up small details, medium details, or large details. You can also sharpen the image. Denoise tool will get rid of all that unwanted noise in the image. If you took the photo in a low light, especially there are two sliders you can work with. You can only select the color denoise. Landscape is very interesting tool, particularly for this image. You can dehaze the photo. You can add more of a golden hour, or you can enhance the foliage. Under advanced settings, you have always more options. And again, masking is also available if you want to work with certain areas of the image. Vignette will allow you to create this dark, border for the image or light border. So if you drag it down, you will see how it is going down. If you drag it up, you will see how it's brighter and you can select the size, meaning that you can bring it closer to the center or you can just keep it around the edges. And again, there are further advanced settings such as roundness, feather and inner light. So these are all basic essential tools. Another large section is creative. That is where you can do a lot of stuff to the image. First one is Relight AI. And that one is very cool because you can control the brightness of all the image separately. So you can bring brightness near and you can see suddenly that everything in the front is getting brighter or you can bring it down to make it darker. I'm gonna bring it a little bit up brightness far. You can make it darker or you can bring it up. I'm going to just darken it a tiny bit to create a little bit more of a depth. Depth. Let's bring it up or down. Here we can literally play with the highlights and shadows of the image. Advanced settings will let you control other things such as the halo. You can control the warmth of whatever is near closer. You can make it warmer or cooler, or you can control the warmth, whatever is further away. And again, masking lets you control mask further. So this would be Relight. Another creative tool is Atmosphere AI. Here you can control fog, layered fog, mist and haze. So let's say I'm just going to play with the fog. Do I want to add a little bit more of fog? to the image, I can choose how much depth or how much lightness I want to add to the image. So this is before, this is after. Let's move on to another creative tool, which are sun rays. Here you can add more sun rays to the image if you don't have them and if you want them. So here I already have sun. So let's just show quickly how this works. I'm going to place sun center and drag it where I want 
the sun to be, so where I want to create the sun rays. And here, very simply, I just drag the sliders to add sun rays. I can control the amount, I can control the overall look, I can control sun rays length, penetration. There are further settings below, such as sun settings, where you can control sun radius, sun glow radius, sun glow amount, race settings, number of rays. You can add more or remove. You can randomize them so they are not so always perfect. And you can control sun warmth. Do you want it a little bit more warmer or a little bit cooler? The same goes to sun, sun rays warmth. So this is quite a large section when it comes to sun rays. I have changed the image to show you the next tool, which is dramatic. Here you can slide across to see how much detail you want in the image to make it more dramatic. Obviously the colors are slowly being taken away a little bit and you can control the local contrast. Do you want the image more softer looking or do you want more contrasty? Other controls in this tool are brightness and saturation. You can bring the brightness down or you can add saturation or remove the saturation. This is before, this is after, before, after. Let's move on to another tool, which would be mood. Here you can choose LUT to set different mood to the image and control it further. You can either add custom LUT file, you can download new LUT file, or you can choose any of these already added. So I'm gonna go, to, for example, under cinematic toning and select long beach. And now you can see that the colors changed quite a lot. This is before, this is after. Here I can control the LUTs further. I can make it even more stronger or I can tone it down if I don't want it too much. If I just want a little bit, I can add more contrast to the image or remove the contrast and I can remove the saturation or add saturations. I can make the colors pop. So I think I'm just gonna bring it tiny bit here more and this is what we got before and after. And again, notice that masking is also available. Toning tool will let you control shadows and highlights separately. So here we can bring, let's say, shadows saturation up a bit and change the hue, change the color. So I'm going to go more for the blue tones. Here we can select how much of the adjustment we want, the amount. If I'm gonna drag it to the left, I'm gonna take it off. If I'm gonna drag it to the right, I'm gonna select more. So I can just tone it down all over. Here, if I'm gonna select highlights, bring the saturation up a little bit, I can change the hue, the tone, the color of the highlights. And again, I'm gonna go more to the blues. So this is before and after, before and after, and I can bring the highlights change a little bit more or tone it down. Matte tool will let you control matte. Here we can bring it up all the way or bring it down. Look how the image is changing completely. We can fade it a little bit more. We can remove the fade. You can add contrast, remove the contrast, and we can also work with vividness. Color toning has further controls below. We can select the range, change hue, and saturation. So this is the image at the start and now. Completely different. I have selected a different image to show you the next tool, which is mystical. So here I can drag the amount up to add mist to the image and I can see how much softer the image got. This is 100%, this is before, so I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. And we can play with shadows. We can bring these shadows up or we can keep them down. Smoothness will allow us to smoothen it even further or remove 
the smoothness. There are additional color controls below. You can bring the saturation up or you can remove the saturation. You can warm the image up or make it a little bit cooler. So this is before and after, before and after. Two more tools in the creative section are glow and film grain. I'm gonna go to glow. Here you can select from one of these choices. I'm gonna stay with soft focus. And here, when you drag the amount up, you can see how the focus is changing, how soft the image is starting to be. That's like the old glamour effect. Under the advanced settings, you can control more. You can control the softness. You can control brightness. If you want to bring it down a bit, you can control contrast or warmth of the image. So this is before and after, before and after. Let's move on to the last control, which is film grain. So here we can add film grain if you wanted to create this old style photo. Size and roughness would be another controls. We can control the size and roughness of the grain or just the roughness. Last two sections are portrait and professional. Let's first look at the portrait section. And I have added this photo because the first one will be portrait bokeh, AI. Here you can control the bokeh in the shot. So once I drag the amount up, you can see the amount of bokeh added to the image. As it is AI, once you go with the mouse over the person, you can see that the person was already automatically selected. If there were areas which were not selected, if you wanted to add more areas, you can use, use brush control. Here you can select the size of the brush and simply add more areas you would like to select. And here you can see I'm already selecting the tree. So the tree and the person is not going to get affected how much bouquet you are going to control in the image. So here's before, after, before and after. Face AI is self-explanatory. You will control everything when it comes to face here. You can lit up the face a little bit more by simply dragging the face light up. You can slim the face if you prefer. You can play with eyes here. You can change eye color with literally one click. You can add iris flare. You can enlarge eyes a little bit. You can add more white in the eyes. You can use eye enhancer. If you had red eyes, you would remove the red here. Dark circles is very powerful as well. If you drag it up a little bit, it will get rid of the circles under the eyes very quickly. And you can play with the eyebrows. You can also control everything regarding mouth, lip saturation, lip redness, lips darkening. And if you will see teeth in the image, you can even make them a little bit more wider. So this is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. Skin controls are next. Here you can Clean up the skin quite a bit by dragging the amount slider to the right. You can also select skin defects removal AI that will get rid of any imperfections on the skin. And here when I drag it, it will make the skin smoother. Shine removal will remove shine. So here is before and after, before and after. You can already see that some of the skin imperfections were removed. Body AI control is next. Here you can change the shape of the body or make changes to abdomen. If you took images on a white background, you can use high key tool to adjust them further. You can work with the amount, standard high key, dynamic high key and blacks. Advanced settings will allow you control glow, contrast and saturation. So this was quite large portrait section. The last section is professional where you can control things like super contrast. Here you can highlight the contrast. Here you can 
choose a highlights balance. You can control mid-tone contrast. You can control shadow contrast. Color harmony will allow you to change brilliance, warmth, color contrast, split color warmth, and color balance. Dodge and burn will let you control what do you want to lighten or darker in the image or erase? Let's say I want to lighten an area on her arm here to create a little bit of a highlight. So all I have to do is select the right size of the brush. I'm going to bring it down a tiny bit. That should be good. I'm going to keep the softness of the brush at 100% and strength. I'm going to lower perhaps to 38. And I'm just going to drag to create this highlights. Now, if I still feel that it is a little bit too strong, I can bring the amount down to blend it in. So we have just a little bit of a highlight. This is before and after, before and after. Next tool below Dodge and Burn is Clone. This is where we can do stuff like clean up imperfections on the skin or remove certain objects in a background, like a dust spot. So I'm going to zoom in on the image. First of all, I'm going to bring the size of the brush of the clone a little bit down because I just would like to fix this little area. Softness, I'm going to keep at 100% strength. I'm going to bring tiny bit down. First, what I need to do is click beside it to select the sample of the skin. And now I can just click to remove the imperfection. Let's go back to catalog. As we did many edits, now the images get nicely organized. You have all your folders on the left. When you right click on the image, you can do many things here. Set a flag, rotate, flip, see all the adjustments, export, go to create album, remove from single image edits, move to trash, if you click on the Luminar Neo logo, you get all those menus here. You can organize the files by showing all photos or favorites, rejected, unmarked. You can also change the order by date, edit and size. You can hide this panel by clicking this icon on the right. If you click on the image, at the bottom right corner is where you can copy all adjustments and also paste them to the other images. On the right top is where you can share the files. And depending on the license you have, or if you are a pro member, you might have access to all these extensions. HDR Merge, Noiseless, Upscale, Background Remover, Focus Talking, Super Sharp, and Magic Light. If you have membership, you can also download monthly assets in X membership. Those are added, like I said, every month. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. I've got one Luminar Neo license to give away. So to participate in this giveaway, you must be subscribed to this channel and comment below in a video comment section what feature you liked the most about Luminar Neo. You have exactly 48 hours. Winner will be announced in a comments section. The comments will be pinned to the top. See you in the next video. Ciao. Ahoy.